right, so number 11 tells us it's the same thing. Okay, we're trying to write the polynomial that has these zeros. Now, there's something that you need to know when you have a square root as a zero. Um, because they only give us two answers right here. Positive square root of 3 and then positive square root of 10. So, if we only have two answers, that means that it should be degree 2. It should be a quadratic. Well, all of our answer choices are degree 4. Well, here's the deal. When you have square roots or when you have i's, they come in pairs. So if square root of 3 is one of our answers, then the negative square root of 3 is also another answer. So there's two roots. If positive square root of 10 is an answer, then negative square root of 10 is also an answer. So this is actually a fourth degree <coughs> polynomial. So if we've got to decide which one of these is the answer, okay, I could show you the process of working this out, but it, it's lengthy, okay? Um, so I'm just going to plug in my answer choices, and I'm going to check, all right? So I'm going to do square root of 3. I'm going to store it as x, and then I'm going to type in my first answer choice, x to the fourth minus 14x squared plus 30. I don't get zero, so that means it can be the answer. x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 4x plus 30. I don't get zero. That can't be the answer. x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 30. I get zero. Okay. That could be the answer. I want to check the last one, though, just to be on the safe side. Okay? Uh, and it's very similar. It's just plus 35 instead of plus 30. So I'm just going to press second, enter, pull up my last entry, and then change that 30 to 35. I don't get zero. So it has to be C. Okay? It has to be C, and it is. Okay? It is C. <clears throat> um, now, Say, for example, maybe B also gave us 0. B and C both gave us 0, and we plugged in the square root of 3. Then we'd want to go in and, in those two, plug in the square root of 10 and see which one gives us 0. Um, it should be only one of them that would give us 0 for the square root of 10 as well, if both of them gave us 0 for the square root of 3. Okay? Um, so here's another one, number 12. Okay? Number 12. Uh, these are even bigger. Okay, 2 plus the square root of 7 and 1 plus the square root of 5. Um, they're, we call them conjugate pairs. It's a weird word, but all it means is you keep it the same. You just change the sign in front of the square root. So 2 minus the square root of 7 is also a 0. And 1 minus the square root of 5 is also a 0. So we do have 4 here as well. So it is 4th degree. Obviously, that's all of our answer choices. So we really don't have a choice there. Um, so just type in that entire expression, 2 plus the square root of 7, store it as x. Type in your answer choices, x to the fourth minus x cubed uh, plus x squared plus 22x plus 12. It doesn't give us 0. So here we go. Let's try another one. Let's try b. Oops. Try and not have to type in too much. Put 6 right there. x squared plus 24x plus 12. That one doesn't give me 0. Okay. How is C different? Um, 22x instead of 24x. That one gives me 0. I'm going to check the last one just to be on the safe side. You never know. Uh, plus 9x plus 22x plus 12. It doesn't. C, again, is the only one that gives us 0 when we plug in 2 plus the square root of 7. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Um, let's look at one with complex. Number 13. I with multiplicity 2. So that means I is twice. Well, I told you if it's complex as well, it comes in a pair. So if positive i is an answer, then negative i is also an answer. So those are our four choices. Um, so we want to plug in i 
for x. Now you could store i as x, or you could just type it into your equation. Either way, um, x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 6 doesn't give me 0. It's got to give you 0 for it to be the answer. What about plus 2? That gives me 1. That's not good enough. Uh, plus 1. We're getting closer. That one gives me 0. But I do want to check the last one just to be safe. Minus 3x plus 1. It doesn't give me 0. It gives me an imaginary number. Okay, so C is a very popular answer here. Okay. All right. Uh, I want you all to try this one. Okay, you all try for Okay, let's look at number 17. It says factor. One zero has been given. X cubed plus 5X squared minus 2X minus 24. Now, just by looking at it, what type of factoring should we try and do here? Grouping, because it's cubic. It has four terms. But if we group those together, we're not going to get the same thing in our parentheses. So that means it's not factoring by grouping. So here's why they tell us one of the zeros. We're going to go back to synthetic division again. Okay? If 2 is one of our zeros, let's do synthetic division on this. x cubed has coefficient of 1, x squared has coefficient of 5, x is negative 2, the constant is negative 24. Bring down the 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Add, we get 7. Multiply, 7 times 2 is 14. Add, negative 2 plus 14 is 12. Multiply 12 times 2 is positive 24. That gives us a remainder of 0, which it should because 2 is one of our zeros. Okay, so that leaves us with x squared plus 7x plus 12. Can we factor that quadratic? Can we factor x squared plus 7x plus 12? I think we can. Okay, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 plus 3 is 7. So that means that f of x, that function, can be written as x minus 2. Remember, if 2 is one of our zeros, then as a factor, it's minus. And x plus 4 and x plus 3. Okay, when we factor x squared plus 7x plus 12, that's x plus 4 times x plus 3. Okay, not that bad, right? Okay, let's look at 18. Same deal. Looks like it's factoring by grouping, but it's not. Okay, it's not. Uh, you could try it, but you're not going to get the same thing in your parentheses. So, if they give us one of the zeros, then we need to use synthetic division to reduce this to a quadratic that hopefully we can factor. So 1, negative 7, 15, and negative 9 are our coefficients. Bring down the 1. Multiply, we get 3. Add, we get negative 4. Multiply, we get negative 12. Add, we get 3. Multiply, we get 9. Add, we get 0, which we're supposed to, because 3 is one of our zeros. x squared minus 4x plus 3. Might not look factorable, but it really is. Okay, x minus 3 comes from the fact that 3 is one of our zeros. And then x squared minus 4x plus 3, that's x minus 3 times x minus 1. And you may see this written on the answer key like this, x minus 1 times x minus 3 squared. Because remember, if it's repeated, we can write it as that squared. Now, how can we check these? Okay. A couple different ways. Uh, what I would do is I would type the original equation, x cubed minus 7x squared plus 15x minus 9 into y1. And I would type my answer into y2, or the answer choices, if I'm doing the kind of guess and check method here. And go look at the table. Make sure all the y values match up. They do, so we're good. Those are equivalent. They are the same. Okay? Yes, ma'am. 
I factored this quadratic right here. Okay. So the whole purpose is, of the synthetic division is so that we can reduce it to a quadratic that is then factorable, and then we factor that. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and talk about something like 19 and 21 uh, and 20. Okay. I'm not going to do synthetic division with a square root in it. Okay. So if I was faced with that, then what I would do is I would take my answer choices. I would do exactly what I just showed you in the calculator. Type in the original. Y'all do this with me. Help me out. Okay. I need some people. I'm going to type in the original, and I'm going to type in answer choice A. Okay. Um, I need groups 1, 3, and 5 to type in answer choice B in the original. The original and answer choice B. I need groups 2 and 4 to type in answer choice C, the original and answer choice C. And I need groups 6 and 7 to type in the original and answer choice B. Does everybody have something to type in? Huh? Y'all are seven. So y'all are doing the last one. Uh, group one. So answer choice B. Mine doesn't match up. As long as I typed everything in, right? I think I did. Yep, it's not A. B, C, or D? Not B? You're looking at the table to see if the Y values match up. You type the original in Y1, you type the factored form in Y2. And you're looking at the table to see if all the y values match. I just typed in C, and that's not right. I hear somebody saying D. Let's see. Yep, it's D. Okay, it is D. Gotta be careful. Okay, type in the original, type in the answer choice <clears throat> in another one, and then you want to check and make sure that your Y values match up. Okay. So this one is D. All right. All right. So anybody have any questions about how to check these things? <clears throat> 